A Lexington man is accused of threatening multiple police agencies across the country. Now, he didn't tell police he threatened them, but he did say why he called. We'll have details on that coming up. Storm cleanup is underway in Lexington after powerful storms knocked trees over onto trucks like this one. Strong and severe storm still expected later on this afternoon. It'll clear out there for the evening and nighttime hours. Then we have a few more storms the next couple of days, but all our focus is really on today. We're going to get into that coming up. WKYT News starts now with first alert weather. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. Another round of storms is heading towards the Bluegrass region this midday, and some of those could, could be severe, with the biggest threat coming from strong winds. We have called a first alert severe weather day to keep you up to date on the latest conditions and the information coming in. Let's go to WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris, tracking it on our first alert defender network. Yeah, and the good news is there's nothing going on right now. The bad news is it looks like later on this afternoon we'll sort of see some of these storms spark up and those will move right across the region. I still am saying exactly what I said this morning. This is no outbreak type of situation. This is no widespread severe weather, but a few isolated severe cells are possible. And you can see right here. I mean, that looks like an extremely strong cell that should be severe, but it's not. And that's that's what we're going to be looking at is mainly just a lot of lightning, also some heavy downpours and some isolated severe weather here and there. That's what we need to be watching out for the rest of the afternoon. There is a slight risk of across much of our viewing area, and I say much and not all because north and northwestern zones, just a marginal risk, very, very small risk. Uh, but nonetheless, it's there for everybody. And so I'm going to show you when I expect these storms to move on in and how that's going to affect the rest of your afternoon coming up. Thank you very much. And before that gets here, cleanup is already underway at this noon hour after a batch of storms rolled through Lexington overnight. Strong wind gusts took out several trees, blocking some roadways around the city. WKYT's Mark Barber continues our top story team coverage at noon with a look at the damage. The powerful storm knocked trees onto several streets in Lexington. The damage is going to take quite a while to clean up here on Southport Drive, where several large tree limbs are sitting on a truck. It kind of looks like almost a scene out of a movie. Larry Bryant lives next to the man whose truck is buried under a mountain of branches. He's in for a rude awakening once they get that tree cut up. His SUV is in much better shape, but it probably won't escape without a scrape. I think the damage is is. is Pretty, pretty light damage. May need some body work, maybe some paint. The strong winds that tore down trees overnight also knocked out power to more than 800 homes and businesses. I just really can't believe. I mean, within just a few minutes, all this happened. This here, you know, my vehicle, my neighbor's vehicle. Bryant says he's now waiting for his insurance company to come out and take a look at his SUV. He says it will probably take all day to clear all these trees out of here. In Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Crews tell us a handful of streets that were closed by the fallen trees are all now back open here at noon. More storms, though, are in today's forecast, as Micah just told us. So download the WKYT Weather Plus traffic app and take the first alert defender with you wherever you go. We're learning more about a man who drowned in the Kentucky River. The Garrett County Coroner says 42-year-old Charles Martin of Lexington was swimming with three others near Buckeye Road when he went under and did not come back up. His friends pulled him out and drove him halfway to town to meet an ambulance, but he died on the way. We'll have more on the investigation, what we found out about him, coming up in a report on WKYT News at 12:30. A Lexington man is facing more charges accused of harassing and making threats against police in Texas and Michigan. Police say Raynell White called police departments in Houston, San Antonio, and West Bloomington, Michigan. In the calls, police say he was threatening and referenced the deadly officer shootings in Dallas. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is outside the Fayette County Court Complex, where White will answer to those charges in less than an hour. Caitlin? Lexington police were on the lookout for Raynell White after they say he threatened multiple police agencies from across the country. He's expected here in court later today on harassing communications and terroristic threatening charges. The 30-year-old was in a Fayette County courtroom just yesterday for similar charges, but that's when he was told there were more charges coming his way. Excuse me, would I be able to get an OR fire? No, sir, it's my understanding. 
okay, there are additional charges that are coming. So until we see what those are, it's not appropriate at this time to look at the bond. According to a warrant for his arrest within the last week, White called three police agencies. From an 859 area code, it says he called the Houston Police Department, the San Antonio Police Department, and the West Bloomfield Police Department in Michigan, and that he called each multiple times. According to the warrant, he called West Bloomfield upwards of 17 times, in which he identified himself as anti-white and said he was going to shoot police in the area when he got the chance. Houston police say the 30-year-old made reference to police being killed in Dallas, Texas, saying you're going to have to learn the hard way and no white person is safe. Each agency noticed the number was a Kentucky one, and police locally say White admitted it was his phone number. He also told police he had been angered by events on national news outlets, specifically news of black males being shot by police. Police say he admitted to shouting at departments, but not threatening. He's expected in court at 1 o'clock for arraignment on the new charges. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Thank you, Caitlin. And White is also charged with making threats against WKYT. It has been nearly two weeks, and the remains of a missing northern Kentucky couple who police say were murdered have still not been found. Robert Jones and Crystal Warner were last seen on their rental property in Washington County 11 days ago now. Craig Pennington is charged in their deaths. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is in Springfield to tell us about the latest search efforts. Hillary? A search team, including dogs, is currently working the property here up Texas Road. It is the last place that Robert Jones and his girlfriend, Crystal Warner, were last seen alive. The couple was last heard from on July 3rd. Family members say they were checking on the rental property Jones owned, where he was having some issues with the tenant. Five days later, police arrested that tenant, Craig Pennington, charging him with two counts of murder. The couple's vehicle was found abandoned in Georgetown. However, their bodies have not yet been found. Sit. Friends and family have Good not work. stopped searching today, thankful for the help of the nonprofit group Kentucky Canine. Searching the place, a witness saw Pennington shoot and kill their loved ones. The family um, would like to feel confident that uh, to clear the area where the murder occurred. So we've come uh, with our uh, search dogs, they're, uh, they're human remains protection dogs. Um, this one is Scout, um, and we're uh, checking the property. The sheriff and the state police know that we're, uh, you know, doing this, and the family really wanted this to be done, so we thought this would be a, a good thing to, to, to get accomplished. We are told there is already another search planned for Saturday. In Washington County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. Pennington remains in jail on a $2 million bond. Well, the tallest building in Frankfurt is soon going to be going up for sale. According to the Herald Leader, the Bevin administration is putting the 25 story Capitol Plaza Tower on the auction block. Bids for the tower will be open to the public next month. Back in 2008, architects recommended that it be torn down. In June, hundreds of people who worked in the Capitol Tower Plaza were moved to a new office building in Frankfurt. Well, an annual summer tradition kicks off this evening out at Masterson Station Park in Lexington. The Bluegrass Fair will begin at 5 o'clock on weekdays and at 3 o'clock on weekends. Admission is $6 per person. Kids 6 and under get in free. And an important reminder, only cash is accepted at the fair. So remember to bring money with you before heading out to the park. The Bluegrass Fair runs through Sunday, July 24th. All right, always a lot of fun. Presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump now less than 24 hours away from announcing his vice presidential pick. We'll take a closer look at the candidates coming up on Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, actress Jennifer Aniston's scathing essay against tabloids about body shaming is winning support among fellow celebrities. What prompted her to write the piece next on WKYT? Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. The funeral for a black man who was shot by a police officer during a traffic stop last week has just started in Minnesota. Services for Philando Castile are being held at the century old Cathedral of St. Paul. This is video of the procession taking his body to the church. Castile was shot several times after reportedly telling an officer that he had a permit to carry a gun. 
The aftermath of the shooting was live streamed by Castile's girlfriend, prompting national outrage and protests against the, across the country. Closing arguments are underway in the trial of the fourth Baltimore police officer charged in the death of Freddie Gray. The 25-year-old black man's neck was broken in the back of a police transport van last year. Lieutenant Brian Rice is the highest ranking officer charged in Gray's death. Two other officers were acquitted and the case against another ended in a mistrial. Donald Trump announced he will reveal his vice presidential choice at a news conference in New York City tomorrow morning. It comes as polls show the businessman gaining ground on Hillary Clinton. And Ouija Jang is in Cleveland, Ohio, where the Republican National Convention will kick off Monday. The race between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton is now a dead heat. The latest CBS News New York Times poll shows Clinton and Trump tied at 40 points each. She had a six-point lead in June. Trump's biggest gain was among independents, where he now has a 12-point lead. I think this poll is devastating for Hillary Clinton. I just don't think there's any other way to put it. Donald Trump is reportedly down to four possible vice presidential candidates. Wednesday, he met with three of them in person in Indianapolis and spoke with New Jersey Governor Chris Christie on the phone. Um, at three, potentially four, but in my own mind, I probably am thinking about two. More than two-thirds of potential Trump voters say who he picks as a running mate will impact their vote. Candidates typically lay low during the other party's convention as a courtesy, but Clinton is scheduled to deliver a speech in Ohio on Monday, the opening day of the Republican National Convention here in Cleveland. You got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't the Clinton campaign is spending millions on a new ad that will run in key battleground states, including Ohio. It shows children watching some of Trump's more controversial statements on TV. Themselves. Clinton addresses Latino voters in Washington, D.C. today before closed door meetings with Democratic senators. Weijia Jang, CBS News, Cleveland. And Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg says she regrets her, quote, ill advised public criticism of Trump. Last week, Ginsburg said she did not want to think about the prospect of Trump winning the presidency. Now she says judges should avoid commenting on a candidate for public office. Several celebrities are standing behind actress Jennifer Aniston's scathing essay in the Huffington Post. Aniston used the piece to reject rumors that she's pregnant in a wake of tabloid shots showing her looking heavier than normal. The actress slammed the tabloids for body shaming, saying the constant scrutiny implies women are incomplete or unsuccessful if they're not mothers. Stars including Melissa McCarthy, Olivia Wilde, and Aniston's husband, Justin Thoreau, have been supporting her call for change on social media. Well, the new Ghostbusters film is poised to become a blockbuster hit around the world, but audiences in one country are likely to miss out on seeing the film. Variety reports that the all-female Ghostbusters reboot has the most pre-sale tickets on Fandango for live-action comedy this year. But that won't help fans in mainland China, where the movie has officially been denied release. Sources for The Hollywood Reporter say Chinese film regulators have banned the film under a rule that prohibits movies that promote cults or superstition. I'm Michelle Chamberlain, an historic announcement for the Fayette County school system that Superintendent Manny Kalk is calling a game changer. I'll explain coming up at 1230. Really, in our viewing area, we have one lone thunderstorm. Look how organized this is. You have one lone thunderstorm rolling just to the north of Danville. You got bits and pieces down toward Virginia, bits and pieces just north of Bowling Green, headed into our far southwestern zones. There's just not much going on right now, and I expect it to continue to be this unorganized. There isn't one line moving through. That's why I can't give you an hour by hour of where these storms will be because they're just so spread out, just so spotty, and that's the way it's just going to be uh, the next several hours. There's one there uh, near Bryantsville. It's actually right over Bryantsville, rolling right across that 27 corridor, 
Heading eastbound, more than likely Richmond, you at least get clipped by this, but the heaviest part actually rolls over the Clays Ferry Bridge and just to the north of Richmond. So just keep in mind that there's one cell out there. It's that cell. No severe weather as of right now. This is another little complex we got to be watching very closely. Gradyville, maybe even off toward portions of Russell Springs if it sticks together to the northern port portion of this complex because to the south, it's the strongest. To the north, it's not very strong, but nonetheless, it is heading down toward the southeast and heading right toward that Greene County, uh, Clinton County, also Adair County, those areas that you're going to be looking at the next couple of hours. Here's the breakdown for that three day tracker because the afternoon, it looks like anywhere from now through about 6 or 7 p.m., is when you get the best chance at some of these spotty storms. Remember, not everybody will see the storms. But there is a good percentage that you will. So just keep in mind, you get under one of these, they're going to be very strong, very heavy downpours, and also a lot of lightning. That is a given. Now, severe weather, it's not a given, it's not a slam dunk. It's a small chance, but it is there. So just heads up for some strong winds to 60 plus miles per hour. By the evening, it fades away. Evening and night looks pretty good. Friday, still a couple of rumbles of thunder. And so we need to be focusing in on that very closely as we head towards your Friday. Not everybody sees rain on Friday. Most stay dry. And this weekend still looks like a drying trend. But nonetheless, we still can't rule out a few storms there in the forecast. Now, here's the deal with this one towards your weekend. Sunday looks pretty dry. But Saturday, just looking at the latest weather data, if we can push the front all the way through, we don't have that good of a chance of rain. But if the front stays back just a bit, it is going to throw a better chance of rain into our viewing area there on Saturday. That's why I kept a 40% chance of rain instead of dropping it to 30 like Sunday. So Saturday is really the day to watch. It could be one of those if the front just lags back just 50 miles. That's going to cause a big problem there in the forecast on Saturday. If it shoots southbound, then we're good to go. It's really one to watch yeah. in the days okay. to come. Oh, very you, close. You're the you're the one to watch it. Yeah, for us. very All close. Right. There you go. We'll know more tomorrow, Thanks. right? That's right. Yeah. All right. Stay here now on WKYT News. A Wildcat is in contention at golf's third major. And what the Cats are changing to contend in the SEC this year. Dave Baker's next with sports. And let's check stocks as we head to break this afternoon. Wow, the Dow obviously in record territory, all-time record territory, and the major market indicators are all up at midday. This is the fourth and final day of the SEC Media Days down in Hoover, Alabama. But from a Kentucky standpoint, reporters and fans still talking about the Cats' appearance yesterday. Mark Stoops and his players were excited and upbeat as they took their turn in front of 2,500 media members from around the country. As fans here know, though, this has been an off-season of change and relentless work. And in order to change the outcome of close games that got away, the Cats have to start by changing the mindset. It's easy. Uh, to change the climate of a program and, and uh, do some things to get the energy going and all that. But the culture is very deep rooted. It takes a commitment from a lot of people. The second big area that I've talked a little about uh, today is, is just capacity. You know, our team needs to be able to handle more. Whether it's mental, physical, whatever it is, we need to be able to handle more. That attention to detail. We want to be an accountable team. We want to be a disciplined team. You know, uh, we've been working really hard, and uh, we've been really trying to, you know, create a brotherhood and get closer with one another because the only way we're going to, you know, play well on the field is if we have great chemistry within our team. And, and I feel like we've been doing that so far this, this season. The 145th British Open is underway at Troon, and two Americans are tied at the top of the leaderboard. Phil Mickelson, 500 through 11 holes. Patrick Reed in the clubhouse with a 566. USA players have taken the top six spots on the leaderboard in the opening round. Former Wildcat J.B. Holmes is tied for ninth, three under par through his first seven holes. Tonight on the Big Blue Insider, it's Ryan Lemon once again sitting in for Dick Gabriel, who will be wrapping up our coverage of SEC Media Days later today. That's at 6 on 630 WLAP. We'll hear from Dick beginning on WKYT News at 4 as they wrap up the SEC Media Days and the preseason predictions. But for now, guys, that's a look at sports on this Thursday. All right, it's been fun finding out about the season ahead. Thank you, Buzz. And there's more to come in our next half hour of WKYT News at Noon. Our Victor Puente will have the latest on the case against a Clark County constable who is charged with drug trafficking. I feel Pendleton in Garrett County at 1230. A Lexington man drowns in a section of the Kentucky River. Saturday's Powerball jackpot $333 million. And tomorrow's Mega Millions jackpot is $20 million.